Welcome. All right, so what I want to do is show you how to graph y equals negative 2x squared minus 10x. So in this equation, what we're looking at is we need to graph this equation. And remember, when graphing by using a table, the most important thing that we need to make sure that we do is find our axis of symmetry. Because when we're choosing a set of points to graph this from, we have to make sure we choose points to the left and choose points to the right. So the first thing I need to do is find the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry all right, is going to be, remember, it's a vertical line, which x equals opposite of b divided by 2 times a. Well, opposite of b is going to be a negative, negative 10, divided by 2 times negative a, which is negative 2. Notice my a equals negative 2, b equals negative 10. Now, a very common mistake that students will make is they say, well, it's already negative. It says negative b, and then it's already negative, so you just plug it in. It says the opposite of b. Op b is negative 10. So the opposite of negative 10 is now going to end up being positive. So in this case, we'll have. 10 over negative 4. Now we can reduce that to x equals a negative 5 halves. So now that we know the axis of symmetry, I'm going to want to plot that on a coordinate grid. So negative 5 halves, if you put in decimal form, is like negative 2.5. So that means it's going to be between negative 2 and negative 3. So we'll just make a nice little dotted line. And remember this axis of symmetry, this is what's going to cut our parabola in half. So now what I need to do is choose points to the left and to the right of my axis symmetry. I can't just pick random numbers, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, because if I pick, and I'll show you this in a second, if I pick 0, 1, or negative 1, negative 2, 1, and 2, those are going to be all points that are on one side of my parabola. I'm not going to know that it crosses at this axis of symmetry. So that's why we pick the axis symmetry first, so we can pick points to the left and to the right to form our graph. Now, one thing we will work on um, next working on this is using this axis symmetry to find points on one side, and then we can just go and reflect them. All right. So let's go in and, and actually, I'm going to make this very quickly. We know that my points on the axis of symmetry reflect over each other. So that's actually one point that I was going to make. If I can find the points to the right, then what we can do is I can just reflect them over my axis of symmetry, and they're going to be the exact same points because we've discussed that. So I think I was actually ready to do that for this. And let's do undo that. So anyways, our axis of symmetry is at negative 5 halves. Now let's go ahead and just look at, let's pick points to the left and to the right. Well, a point to the left would be negative 2. And then we'd have negative 3. Our points to the right would be negative I'm sorry, that's negative 3 and negative 4. And then points to the right would be negative 2 and negative 1. Now, we can find the values for all these points, or we can find just two points to the left and then use our axis symmetry to reflect them over. And that's what I'm going to do because it's a lot less math. Um, all right, so let's go and do this, but we do need to find our, act, we do need to find our vertex, which is going to be some fun. So the first thing, let's find our value for negative 4. So y equals negative 2 times negative 4 squared minus 10 times negative 4. Then let's do y equals negative 2 times negative 3 squared minus 10 times negative 3. Then we'll do y equals negative 2 times negative 5 halves squared minus 10 times negative 5 halves. This one's going to be fun. I'll leave the rest of the board for this one. So negative 4 squared is 16. 16 times negative 2 is a negative 32. And then 10 times negative, negative 10 times negative uh, 4 is a positive 40. So that's going to give us a value of negative positive 8. Now let's do negative 3. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. 9 times 2 is a negative 18. And that's going to be positive. So negative 18 plus 30, that's going to give me a positive 12. Now let's go ahead and do over here. Yeah. OK, so let's just do this step by step. Negative 2. Negative 5 half squared is going to now become a positive 25 over 2 minus 10 times negative 5 halves. Remember, we just multiply our numerators. I can put this over 1 and just multiply across. So this now becomes a positive 50 over 2. But now I can multiply. Oh, that's 25 over 4. Got to make sure you square the numerator and square the denominator. 
Now I multiply across. So this becomes now a negative 50 over 4 plus 50 over 2. But there's a problem. We can't add when we have unlike denominators. So now I need to multiply by 2 over 2 to produce an equivalent fraction that's now going to have the exact same denominator. So now I add negative 50 plus 100 over 4. So that's going to be um, 50 over 4. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plot these points to the left and then use symmetry to plot the remaining points to the right. OK, so the first thing we'll do is let's do negative 4, 8. So I go over negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then I go to negative 3, 12. So I go over negative 3 and then up 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, I'm sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So negative 3, 12. OK, um, and now what I'm going to do is, so negative 3, 12. And then let's do 4 over um, 50 divided by 4. That should be like right here. All right, so 50 over 50 divided by 4. So how many times is 4 going to 50? Well, we know that 4 goes into 40 10 times. And then we have two more times, which would be, uh, let's see if I did this right, 12.5 would kind of be the decimal approximation. So if this is 12, then this is 13. So this would be 12.5 or 50 over 4. Now, again, I see these points. To find my remaining points, what I'm going to do is now just reflect this over. So at negative 2, it's going to be at 12, right? Because remember, these points are exactly the same. And at negative 1, it's going to be 8. All right. Now, what we're going to do for right now, all right, I'm not going to get very detailed into finding this. But what I'm going to do, so this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to estimate right now um, where my x-intercepts are. I'm not going to get very detailed. I'm just going to estimate. Um, I probably would use a graphing utility. Actually, you know what? I'm just not even going to get to that point. Um, we're going to learn how to find the zeros for this. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to leave out finding the x and the y-intercepts. We will get to that in later videos. But let's make sure we have our axis symmetry, and let's make sure we can find our vertex. So our vertex, in this case, is, remember, going to be our maximum point, which in this case is where the axis symmetry goes through, which will be at the point negative 5 halves comma 50 over 4. Or if you want to use decimal approximate or decimals, you could do negative 2.5 and 12.5, all right? And then again, we've talked about the x and y intercepts. Um, I'm not going to want to get through it. It looks like, though, it's going to cross at 0, 0. And I don't want to get too close, but you could say that, uh, let's see here. If I did 0, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go through it. We'll go through these videos later. So, um, But it actually does cross at 0, 0 for the y and x intercept. And then there also is another um, intercept as well. But, Let's just estimate where that's going to cross at right now. And we'll go ahead and show in other videos how to do that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph your equation. Thanks.